If you could make the perfect RC battery, what would you make? Would you want more punch and power? Or how about more capacity and runtime? Or maybe both? Well, this is exactly the question ProTech RC faces when creating their high-end competition grade LiPo packs, which are meant to represent the best of the best. But how do they determine that? Well, today we're gonna go behind the scenes of ProTech RC to see how they test their batteries, the data they collect, and why it matters. Not many people know it, but ProTech RC is a brand of A-Main hobbies and was originally created back in 2005 to offer racers high-end products for competitive use. The selection was pretty thin in the early days, but quickly grew to where it is today, with ProTech offering a thousand different items from servos, engines, and accessory lipos available in over 400 stores between the states and around the world, and a race team in almost every category, including drivers like Ryan Mayfield, Adam Drake, Ty Tessman, and team associated Spencer Rivkin. And in that time, ProTech has added multiple national titles, as well as the prestigious IFMAR World Championship title to their belt. When it comes to LiPos, ProTech was one of the first to offer high graphite content lithium cells, LIHV high voltage, a 3S shorty crawler pack, and 5mm bullet connectors, all while offering many specialty race packs, like the LCG1S pan car pack, the LCG2S Touring Car Pack, the LCG2S Mod Pack, the non-LIHV 2S Drag Car Pack, the reshaped 4S Shorty, and three different 3S Crawler Packs to choose from. All packs made specifically for their application, thanks in part to the needs of the team drivers and a lot of testing. So, how are the batteries tested? Well, this process all starts inside the A-Main lab with sample batteries sent from the supplier. When those batteries arrive, they've already undergone their UN 38.3 certification, which is a United Nations standardization for safely shipping lithium batteries. To be certified, a lithium battery has to prove it can withstand each test shown in the left column with the results reported on the right. If the battery can't pass this certification, it'll never end up in the ProTech lab to be tested, but if it has, we move on to step one, 1C cycling. Step one, it's pretty simple. It's just a gentle break-in cycle, fully charging the battery on the 625 Duo to the battery's maximum voltage. So that means the pack is charged to 4.2 volts a cell if it's a regular LiPo, or 4.35 volts a cell if it's an LIHV pack. Once the battery is fully charged, it's placed on the CBA, or Computerized Battery Amplifier, which is basically a computer-controlled discharger. And this can hold a constant discharge amperage up to 35 amps. But we're only on stage one, so we're only discharging at a 1C constant rate, down to 3.4 volts a cell. Now once this is complete, the battery is left to cool back to room temperature and the cycling process is repeated three more times. Chad Bradley is our ProTech manager and he's also a professional RC racer and he handles all the testing and working with the team drivers who found out the internal resistance of the packs can lower after cycling the packs in. So that's why it's done first. If you like testing videos, there's more to come. Step two, a 35 amp constant discharge test. For step two, things become a bit more serious as we move on to the performance testing and graph data collecting, measuring the battery amp hour discharge, voltage hold, and resistance. Now to perform this test, the battery is first fully charged to 1C just like in step one to its max cell voltage. So 4.20 volts a cell if it's a regular LiPo or 4.35 volts a cell if it's LIHV, but this time, when the battery finishes charging, Chad Bradley needs to verify two really important variables. The first is that the battery pack is indeed charged to its exact voltage, down to the hundredth of a volt. If it's not, it needs to get fixed, because in order to get a sound benchmark, all batteries need to start at the same place, or in other words, they need to be tested consistently. The second variable Chad checks when the batteries, once they finish charging, is the temperature of the battery pack. As many of you know, a LiPo can warm up when charging, and we don't want that. So in order to proceed further, the battery needs to be at the same temperature all the other batteries were tested at, which is about 72 degrees Fahrenheit, or about room temperature. And if the battery is hotter than that, it's gonna sit until it is. To give you an idea of what temperature can do to a battery performance, this is a graph showing the exact same battery tested twice at different starting temperatures. Now the green line is what you'd expect to see with an initial voltage drop before it tapers off and stabilizes. 
And with the red line, the initial voltage drop is pretty huge, which translate into the vehicle feeling like it has no punch or power, or kind of flat. But then the battery voltage comes back up as the battery warms itself from the inside out during use. In this example, the battery that was warmer provided more voltage, more capacity, and a lower internal resistance. So battery temperature is a really big deal, and all the batteries need to not only be the exact same end voltage, but they have to be the same temperature before the test can move on. So once these variables have been confirmed, the charged battery can be placed back on the CBA and this time discharged at a constant 35 amps, all the way down this time to the 3.0 volts a cell. While it's discharging, the computer software collects how many amp hours the CBA has pulled out of the battery and how well the battery voltage is holding up to it all represented in this graph. The internal resistance of the battery is also collected and it's shown over here on the right side. Once the battery is completely drained, the graph of data is done and it can be saved and cataloged as test number one for this particular battery. But that's just the beginning. This 35 amp constant discharge test needs to be performed three more times. And then all four data sets are averaged out and Chad rates the pack. For regular LiPos that are not LIHV, step two of testing is done. But if it is a high voltage battery, all this testing needs to be done four more times, with the battery now charged to 4.20 volts a cell. This is how Protec RC is able to provide battery specs at high voltage and regular voltage levels for LIHV batteries only. It may take Chad more time to run all these tests for one battery, but having the capacity for the two different voltage levels is pretty important. Once all that data has been collected, it's been averaged out, and it's been rated, we can finally move on to step number three, comparing the current graphs with old graphs. Protec has over 10 years of battery graph data in its catalog, and not all are Protec. If there's a really good comparable battery out there, it will get tested and compared to a Protec pack, and all that data gets saved. So for step number three, it just consists of overlaying this new current data graph with any previous graphs, a previous battery model, or any comparable batteries in the market, and comparing that data. There really isn't too much to say or show for this, it's just a lot of analyzing on Chad's part to go through that data to hopefully find an improvement in the capacity, the voltage, or the internal resistance. And if he can't find an improvement, there probably isn't one. Now this is a critical point in battery testing because the question needs to be asked, is this battery worth any more of our time or money? Most batteries tested don't make it beyond this stage and you just kind of cut your losses and move on. But if the battery does look good and we want to proceed further, we're going to move on to step number four, real world testing. Now this seems pretty obvious, charge the battery and go play, but it is more involved in that, and ProTech uses their team driver's help to evaluate the packs. So who better to tell us about his process than team driver and IFMAR world champion, Spencer Rifkin of Team Associated. What's up guys, Spencer Rifkin here. I wanted to talk about what are some of the things that I look for when I'm testing batteries for ProTech. The first thing that I do is I get the battery on a charger to cycle it a couple times to check the internal resistance short for IR. If the internal resistance is super low, that is something that's super important for most amount of power, more punch, more efficiency. So normally a good battery is anything that's lower than 1.0 per cell for IRs is considered an amazing battery. The next step that I look for is the milliamps. If the marking on the battery says it's a 4600 milliamp battery and I discharge the battery all the way, charge it all the way back up, and it's consistent with the 4600 milliamp marking or whatever the battery is, then that would be considered a good battery. The next step that I do is I take it on the track. I run it for 10 minutes, which is the, normally the longest racing that we'll see in 10 scale. And if the battery doesn't change for the whole 10 minute run, if I don't see any failures um, after a couple of cycles, then I would say check mark, that's a good to go battery. So after all that, I after all the running and cycling that I do, I'll go and check the battery physically to see if there's any um, issues with the bullet connectors or the sizing of the battery, if there's any puffing or so forth. That's something that I normally check for. Um, after that, you know, depending on what kind of batteries that we're testing for four cell or two cell, 
Um, if we're tailoring batteries for different segments of racing, whether it's a, a smaller milliamp battery or a bigger milliamp battery, we check for weights, how heavy the batteries are. If you want your car super light, you run a smaller milliamp battery. If you want your car heavier, you run a bigger milliamp battery and so forth. Other than that, that's how I test my batteries and that's it. Which brings us to step number five, the conclusion. At this point, all the team drivers have done their testing and submitted their results as well as any other suggestions for changes. This is also the point where the team has to finally decide, are we bringing in this battery? New batteries tested usually use a different lithium chemistry composition or maybe a different cell configuration or maybe it's just being offered in a new size and weight. So only with all this testing can it be determined if this new battery is better more powerful, more durable, and more ideal for the application. Most of the batteries that make it to this point do get the green light to start production. Not always, but mostly. And that production requires some really big financial deposits and months of waiting. In the meantime, Chad and the team get busy turning sample batteries into proper, legit ProTech items by creating new labels, including new ratings, new part numbers, new barcodes, and new labels for the boxes, all done in-house. All these digital designs are then saved as files and sent to our supplier on the other side of the world and implemented by them, which means they're the first ones to have the final product. Because of this, they send back a few of those final production batteries to ProTech ahead of the big main order, so ProTech can get those batteries sent to Roar, BRCA and EFRA to be approved for sanctioned racing. If it's a year of an IFMAR Electric Worlds, ProTech also sends those batteries to IFMAR for approval. And if all of this was timed correctly, the batteries are receiving their race approval at the same time ProTech is receiving their first batch of these new batteries. So the moment the batteries go live and they're offered for sale, they should already be race approved. Guys, go check out ProTech's line of LiPo batteries by following our links down below. And for more RC, check out these videos.